Hello everybody, Joe Bag of Donuts here. Welcome back to another episode of Umineko. My god, it's it's been a while since I recorded. Uh like a long time. Like like a week. Longer than I expected. I, I did not expect for my uh my little absence here to go on for so long. Uh wh what can you do? Work sucked. Uh I worked a 85 hour work week this week. Uh my schedule got changed on the fly. And I was told to come in one day, four hours early. And that was the day where I posted the the, the little community channel post saying like, Hey, yeah, uh, no, no, no videos for a bit. Uh, oh, God, that was awful. I had to tag along on a training flight in order to do some in-flight ops checks on some components we changed. Except uh, that was the day when they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to be doing like combat approaches for like two hours because we have like eight pilots who need training. So they're all just going to switch out and, and like get their flying hours in. I'm like, oh, God. And if you don't know what a combat approach is, basically, it's when they come in high and drop down real hard. And in all their banks, they take them fucking hard and fast. So super got got pretty motion sick at the end. I was able to hold out until like the last 30 minutes of them, but they took one real hard bank. Like my stomach dropped for like 40 seconds because they were like, it was a big turn. I'm like, all right, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then we banked the other way and my stomach and like all my guts came up and it's like, nope, nope. So then I had to sh like unbuckle myself while the floors tilted at like a 40 degree angle and like make my way to the lab and fucking huck my guts out. Fortunately, I was smart enough to have like nothing to eat that morning besides, you know, water water and coffee. So it was it was gross. I like burned my throat because I needed to like this is gonna get gross, but I had to swallow it like three times in order to make my way over there. So I was in no condition to record after that day. I was like, oh you know, I came in early, I'll get off early, I'll I'll, I'll have time. It's like, no. And then it was just fatigue from like, you know, working such a long work week with uh, no no days off. So here I am now uh, readjusting my schedule to go back on night shift because for whatever reason, they put the night shift guy on a day shift. And then now I have like three days to transition my schedule back into a vampire, which is going to suck because I tried to stay up late last night. And like I went to bed at like four in the morning. I woke up at 1030. So, and I couldn't go back to sleep. So here I am with my nice uh, pot of coffee to try to stave off the tiredness because I'm just fatigued. And oh my God, my fucking shoulders and neck hurt because I was carrying like boxes up and down the flight line yesterday. It was awful. Man, this week just sucked. Awful. Dog shit. Dog water work week. But anyway, you, you don't, you don't want to hear about that. You don't you don't care about that. But I will explain a little further just, just so you don't think I'm a little bitch. Uh, about those combat approaches normally what you do for motion sickness is like you just look at the horizon line and because one of the things that causes motion sickness is like the movement that your inner ear is like detecting with all the fluid sloshing around doesn't match up with what your brain is seeing out of your eyes so that discrepancy your brain is like something's up some this, this, this math ain't coming out kosher dog uh you probably ate some like bad berries off the floor because you know we evolved as fucking lizards and it's like you need to get out whatever fucking poison you ate so go puke your guts out so what you do is like you know you look at the horizon lines so that way you have a point of reference so that way your body's able to detect okay no i am moving up and down moving forward yada yada except i'm in the back of a cargo jet there are no windows the only window is like a little porthole by the uh by the staircase that you lower to get on and off the jet so in the turns where I can see the ground, it's like, all right, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. But then the jet will bank the other way and it'll just go whoop, nothing but sky. And that's when it really hits hard. That's like when you get the cold sweat and you can just like feel the blood draining from your face. Uh, and then most of the time, like when you're flying on an airplane, you're sitting facing forward. I'm on the sidewall seat. So imagine you're rotating a a cross like you're holding two ends of it and you're just twisting it if you're sitting in the middle you're not going to move that much you know you'll move a couple feet but if you're sitting like on the uh you know on the other part of the t you know the parts that are sticking out 
and you rotate that, you're moving like way up in the air. And like up and down, up and down. So it was not good. We're talking like fucking 20 feet up and down on the side. Just whoa. And then, of course, there's the up and down part of it, too, because, you know, we're in climbs and descents. It was bad. Awful. Terrible. Terrible. I still have the barf bags in my in my coat. Not the used ones, because that, they didn't give me any until after it already fucking hucked my guts. But you don't want to hear about that. I'm just venting. Because I'm tired. I'm just, I'm just so tired, man. I'm just so fucking tired. Anyway. Uh, Ange. 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 Whatever your name is. Uh, you keep talking to your imaginary friend of your dead cousin. If I too locked up in an academy without a single friend, had the same kind of power as Mario Nichan, I wonder if I could make my days just as bit richer. Uh, people just look at you with more pity. I wonder if I would be uh, come able to honestly shed tears on the nights I feel like crying and crack a smile when the nights are gray. What are the qualifications? Yeah, your whole specialty is like what, like magic items? Uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Ryo-Nei-chan said that, making an absolute promise with her smile. There's no way we can become witches. But when I listen to her speak, I can believe that maybe we really could. Because the fact is that on this troubled night, when not a single flower of a smile could bloom, her magic had certainly given birth to a smile. Oh God. Now Anje is gonna die in a colony drop. Is, is magic just being a new type? Yep. That's just because Anja is not taking her normal pills. これは魔法なのうん。私が日記に残した魂のかけらをエンジェは魔法で膨らませて私を蘇らせてる。お姉ちゃんはさっき言った。これ、これ、チュニーチャイルドユアランジェ。私は日記を開いた時にしか会えないと思ってるけど、本当はいつも身近にいるって。私に魔法の力がもっとあればそれを見て今こうしているようにお
いるよだからエンジェが私を見ようとしてそして話そうとしてくれれば私はきっと答えられるよしっかりと見て話そうとしてくれれば私やってみる簡単じゃないよいきなりうまくなんてきっといかないよ分かってるきっと簡単じゃないと思うでも私マリアお姉ちゃんみたいになりたいおお Just try to be a little more I don't know Whatever Maria is don't be like that 分かったじゃあ私をよく見てしっかり見てうんゆっくり目を閉じたり開いたりしていきなり長くつむっちゃダメ私の姿を瞳に焼き付けてはそれをまぶたの裏に染み込ませていくつもりでうんやってるまぶたを閉じても私をイメージできるようになったらそのままゆっくり柔らかく目を閉じていてどうまだ私が見えているあ,あうん、多分見えてると思う。You know, some people can't like visualize things in their minds at all. It's like the people who don't have like a. I don't know. It's hard to describe. Like the, the inner voice. Like some. Like if I like try to think. You know, I can think without an inner voice, but if I'm. I can also have like, you know, a monologue with myself. And, you know. It, it, okay, it's, it's weird to describe the like the act of thinking, but you know what I mean. But there are people where there is no. They can't do an inner monologue. It's just thoughts from the void. And also, people who can't, like, visualize things in their minds. Like, say, I don't know, a fucking. What do I have on my desk? A, a can of monster recovery. Uh, Arnold Palmer. Oh, 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 oh. Arnold Palmer. Uh, tea and lemonade. If I, if I like close my eyes, I can make a 3D render of the can in my head and rotate and look at it from different angles. Some people just don't have that ability. And they're lesser for it. You should bully them. Kokoro 逆に瞳に染み込ませていくつもりでゆっくりと虚空に私をイメージして私を虚空に見てうん大丈夫、right. じゃあ閉じるね日記おう Man it'd be real depressing to look at her from like you know a third perspective right now to be like oh god Slowly, I closed the diary. When I closed the diary, a gray reality filled with dull air unfolded. Of course, Rio Nechan's form disappeared. Give it all you've got. Have courage. Take the first step into the world of witches. I felt like Rio Nechan was cheering me on inside my heart. Cheering me on? Really? Isn't that just what I'd like to imagine? No. That's not it. I just convinced myself that it is, and that's why I cannot see her. Ryo Nechan is always by my side, and even now, she's definitely there, cheering me on to do my best. And I, I can hear it, so I mustn't ignore it like it's my imagination or the inner voice of my own heart. Believe that Ryo Nechan is there. I mustn't doubt. I believe. One Chan said she'd always be by my side. I must not doubt that. But as I face that empty space, that empty back wall of the school building, amidst those almost heartlessly boring rays of sunlight, calling out her name was so much easier said than done. The chains of common sense which had clung to me until today sneered at me, telling me that calling out to empty air was ridiculous. It's almost like being told to take a step forward off the roof of a skyscraper overlooking a sea of lights. Oh, yeah, man, ooh, how, how, how crazy would that be? Rio Nechan was telling me that it's all right, that I can do it. Stop thinking that you might fall, that it'd be foolish to take a step off the roof. 
And free yourself from those chains of common sense. I steadied my breathing. I concentrated my mind. Make the form of Mario Nechan you can see vividly on the inside of your eyelids rise to the surface in the empty space before you. Understand magic. See, Onechan. Sure there's a lot of wind. Maria, Onechan. Suddenly answered by the sound of rush, rustling bushes and a wild cry, I came to my senses. Apparently, I hadn't been the only one behind the school building. Oh, I'd been so immersed in the world of the diary that I hadn't noticed that someone else had come afterwards. I recognized a group of three beyond the bushes. They were girls from my class. I felt as though they had come behind the school building to gossip about someone or talk in secret. I hurried out of that place. Because if it became known that I had been alone in a place like this, mumbling to myself would probably create more things for me to deal with. <laughs> oh, what a jokester she is. I could hear the shrill, loud laughter from behind. Irritated and feeling that Mario Nechan had been made fun of, I left that place at a quick pace and then a half run once I turned the corner. And I might have made it to Onechan's world with just a little more time. Frustrating, aggravating. Why does everyone get in my way? I've never gotten in their way, not even once. I ran and ran, but it still felt as though I could hear their shrill laughs. Yeah, adolescent girls are just mean. Oh, thanks for the flashbang. Twelve years later. Oh, god damn it, my fucking shoulders and neck do hurt. I was carrying two different sized, Who different yeah. weighted boxes. Uh, hello? You're not scummy looking at all? Red on red with a yellow tie? Fucking, you work at McDonald's? Okay, guy. Yeah, but, you know, I was carrying two pretty heavy, like, toolboxes. But two different weights, and one was bigger than the other, so one arm was out further. Because, you know, they were both pressed up against my thighs. So one side was pulling me down more. So I had to pull up more with that, so my left shoulder hurts. And then my right calf is sore because I had to push off more with that leg because, you know, it, more weight on my left side. It, it just sucked, man. Oh, yeah, that's right. Anjay and an older uh, gentleman wearing an expensive suit were alone in a massive modern conference room. The conference room was equipped with all the latest equipment for uh, presentations, while keeping intact a refined and composed atmosphere. That alone was enough to make abundantly clear the worth of the corporation that was its owner. However, Anjay couldn't have cared less. Looking aloof from the world, she sat slovenly in one of the high-class chairs for executives with salaries probably north of 20 million yen. <laughs> Anji dismissed it with an offhanded comment, but in reality, it had been a miracle among miracles. She had shot through several layers of safety netting for the, uh, for the remodeling project, been caught by a multicolored banner adorned uh, the atrium, slid down and off it, been softly caught by a final banner landing on the ground without a scratch and left that place he had a brisk walk. Look, it put Hong Kong movies to shame. いくらネットがあるの知ってたったって高さ 
even like jumping off a telephone pole is like pretty, it pretty gets the knees knocking, which I've done before. Uh, it was like a, it was like one of those like obstacle courses where you like, you hook into like a safety harness that's like fucking 50 feet off the ground and you like climb up the rope nets and like yada yada. And one of them was like, you climb to the top of a telephone pole and then jump off to like a trapeze like handle and swing and then let go and like grab onto a net wall. And when you're just like standing on just a pole and like you can feel it moving underneath you, that's like, oh. So Hanjay uh, shrugged coldly, as though saying that she'd have she'd had enough of that topic. Oh man, my fucking my mouth! It's so hard to talk. At this, the old gentleman, who was looking at the world below through the window, burst into laughter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything's a gamble. If she lives that long. The Sumadera family is my mom's family. It's a bit of an old family from Kyoto, and unbelievably strict in a way you can never have imagined from the frank way mom acted. The only person in the Sumadera family I had been on good terms with was Grandpa, who was living separately under the guise of retirement. Mom, too, kept up contact only with Grandpa, and had nothing to do with the rest of the family at all, nor they with her to an ugly degree. Even for me, Grandpa's house was the only part of the Sumadera family I ever went to visit. Being young, I hadn't really understood it at the time, but I heard that Grandpa, as a man who married into his wife's family, was in an extremely weak position, and his relationship with Grandma was also bad. In fact, maybe you could have said that he was hated by Grandma and confined to the house. It isn't hard to imagine that because she had a soft spot for Grandpa alone, Mom was probably also hated by the Sumadera family. As her daughter, I was probably also hated quite a bit. And yet, they had appeared for the first time at my parents' funeral, shamelessly going on about how I'd grown, like they could actually act like family after all this time. After Aunt Ava died, all the wealth of the Ushermia family was inherited by me. If it weren't for that, there's no way they would have been able to say such disgusting words. Man, it's a couple million dollar loan between family, right? Well, just after the vast Ushuramiya wealth I'm shouldering, uh, I'm shouldered with anyway. I must think if they become my guardians, they'll be able to do whatever they please with that wealth. Just how many people have tried to act like a substitute parent and get close to me? え、じゃ、ちゃんも辛いことがあったら、俺でよかったらいつでも相談してな。エンジちゃんのこと。実の孫みたいに思ってるんだからさ。Is <sighs> there a the old gentleman was one of a number of corporate heavyweights who, after Ava passed away, had been entrusted with the business group she had built up. The one he referred to as the chairman was technically the former chairwoman, 
I mean, technically the former chairman, was Ushimiya Eva. His company had once had a friendly relationship with Hideyoshi's company, and he had been a close friend of both Hideyoshi and Eva. For that reason, after Eva lost Hideyoshi, he had become the only person to whom she could reveal her true thoughts. When Eva's heart had been torn by the loss of her family, and she had taken it out on Anje, he had also acted as a buffer between the two, so although Anje didn't trust him, she too found him an easy person to pay a visit. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it was an accident on paper. Yeah. Hush, hush. Don't say the quiet part out loud. どうしてエバオバさんは事故当時屋敷から公平に後継ぎを決めるため、非分の謎という She's already dead, man. You don't gotta blow smoke up her ass. ヒブンの謎を解いたものに家督を引き継ぐなどという新ルールは、クラウスさんから次期当初の肩書きを奪うためだけの茶番だったんだろうな。茶番ってどういう意味ですか？あの秘文は誰にも解ける必要はなかった
後ろ三宅投手の指輪だよその指輪は金蔵さんが特別に作らせた世界に一つしかない指輪だそして今エンジェちゃんが指にしているものは間違いなくそれだと作った細工師を認めた well, the, the to to 後ろ三宅ファミリーはい。The design to come on and off fingers, so say you fucking just bop someone, it's it's pretty easy to just boop. Oh, now it's on my finger now. So, no, you be a Tashka and Eva Sanga Motskara Koso. So, she did. Just say, and Eva Sanga, you should day. Klaus Sanya, business scene, then a Kazakas no shoot, I got shit at it. Ako to come is through to. Yes, yes, we know Klaus is an old Eva San. の作り話とは思えないんだその指輪を奪うためにおじい様を殺害した可能性だってあるけれどいやそしてエヴァおばさんは何らかの細工をして事故に見せかけて一族を皆殺しにしたそうだな大衆氏は財産の独り占めが目当てで一族を皆殺しにしたなんて言ってるようだな Which is what she did. 確かにエヴァさんはここ一番では随分思い切ったこともしちゃう人だよあるいは後ろ三宅の財産を独り占めできるチャンスに生涯でただ一度の殺人を犯したかもしれない、uh-huh. だがね俺はそうは思わない、well, why not? そう信ずるに足るポイントの二つ目は Gonna bring up the point that George got got to when you know she seemed she, she seems pretty broken up about that エヴァさんのご家族だよ。秀吉さんにジョージ君、エンジェちゃんはにわかには信じがたいだろうけど、エヴァさんはあれでかなり家族を大事にする人だったんだ。He was right. I found it very hard to believe that or admit it. But deep inside I knew. Aunt Eva really had been a person who treasured her family greatly. The root of her twisted personality had been nothing more than the sadness of losing her beloved husband and son. Having been used as an outlet for all that emotion, I had no feeling of sympathy for it at all. But even so, it's not like I couldn't imagine that losing her entire family had dealt her an incredible shock sufficient to transform her personality. I don't think that's エヴァさんのあの号泣を演技だなんて到底思えんねえ、はあ、どっちも状況証拠的ですね、yeah. エヴァおばさんの潔白を物理的に示すには至らない<笑> like feelings, それを言っちゃおしまいだよ生き残ったのはエヴァさんのみその彼女がそれが真実だと言うんだからさでも彼女の潔白は誰にも証明できないああそうさ、like、そして彼女の犯行も誰にも証明できないそして信ずるべきポイントの最後が警察だ you sure about that one, bud? Are you sure? 何しろ派手な事件だったからね I don't know what police you know, but uh... They, they've been wrong a lot or fucked up and then just lied to make it look like they didn't fuck up. In both it's all Sawagu Yoron Yato Sarete, Kesasga Zibun to Ebasan or Shirabeta Hazusa. 
it's easy to feel something unnatural about the claim that Ava had escaped the accident by coincidence, because she and she alone had escaped to a hidden mansion. Furthermore, at the time, Hideyoshi's company had been right in the middle of a takeover struggle and had wanted a large sum of cash in order to buy off the big stockholders. Shouldn't be too hard to find a motive there. But as a fact of matter, en route to the family conference, Ava's person had been perfectly clean. Nothing unnatural was found on her that could have been used to brutally murder her family and make it look like an accident. The servants who escaped harm by being off duty on that day also stated that they hadn't seen anything strange regarding anyone related to the event, even included. Putting all that together, it could only be concluded that Ushermiya Eva had headed to Rokunjima for a normal family conference, no different from usual, and became involved in an accident. <laughs> それで、ロケンジマ疑惑は決着じゃないのかな。ロケンジマゲート。無実を示すには何を見つけりゃいいんだい？消極的事実の証明は不可能だ。エヴァおばさんが犯罪を犯したか否か、それを判断する材料が見つからないから、そのまま真相は迷宮入りということですね。The criminal justice system isn't the most perfect system in the world. そうだな。エンジちゃんの期待する言い方にするとそうなるな。エヴァさん自身にだって自分の無実は証明不能なのさ。あの島で不幸な事故があった。そしてたまたまエヴァさんが生き残った。しかもそれ以上のことは何もわからない。つまるところ唯一の生存者であるエヴァさんの話を信じ
いや仮にもし真実が存在したとしてもそれを信じるか信じないか愛があるか否かで決められちまう絶対性の宿らない真実なんて真実と呼べるのかいエヴァさんが物理的なアリバイを示したとしても君はそれを信じられたかい He has a point. I hate Aunt Ava, so I'll probably deny all information beneficial to her and maliciously interpret all neutral information. In other words, inside myself, the truth is already decided. And yet, I'm still unsatisfied, still searching for the truth. So, what exactly is the truth I'm searching for? So, you could do so. So, what do you think about it? エンジェちゃんがエヴァさんを未だ疑っている以上何を聞いても今さら何も変わらないことでもさ少なくとも今のエンジェちゃんじゃ仮に未知の真実を掴んだとしても真相に至ることはできんと思うね私では真相に至れませんかだってエンジェちゃんはどんな新情報や新証拠が見つかったってエヴァさんが犯人だってスタンスは変えないんだろ、yep. ならこれ以上何を調べたって意味はないじゃないか君の中の真相はすでに決まっているわけさ<笑>だがもしエンジちゃんがそれを真相と思わずにさらに奥深くの本当の真相にたどり着きたいと願うなら一個だけ方法があるよもう話したつもりなんだけどなな、uh, no. んだかわかるかいあ、yeah. ちゃんは今エヴァさんを犯人だと仮定し、ものを考えている。でもそれじゃ、片目でものを見てるようなものなんだ。片目じゃ、どんなに目を殺しても、ものを立体的に見ることはできないだろ。Uh-huh. だから。もう一つ目がいるんだ。I did that during one of my annual、uh, vision tests back when I was flying status.、Uh, every year we had to go and get a depth perception test done,、uh, including a whole other batch of like different vision tests, you know, color blindness, just general seeing. They do this thing where they like shoot a puff of air at your eye in order to like test your eye's density to see if you got like mushy eyes or whatever for some reason. But I, I got something in my eye when I was doing the, the, the depth perception test. And what it is, is there's like a block of acrylic, and it has like several like plastic rings in it, and you need to like say which one is in the forward position. But because I had something in my eye, I couldn't see very good, so I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just close, close my left eye. Ah,、oh, now I can see much more clearly now. And then I proceed to get them all wrong because I have no depth perception because I have one eye closed. It's like, you good, man? And I'm like, ah,、oh, yeah, I just got something in my eye, so I can't see very good. He's like, uh, well, you need, you, you need both eyes for this. I'm like, oh yeah. And then I ace that shit. もちろん、今の目とは別の立場でのエヴァおばさんが犯人ではないあるいは本当に事故であるという過程にも基づいて物事を見ろと Yeah, you gotta play devil's advocate, you know, by yourself そうそう、その通り物事を考えるときには異なる立ち位置から見るようにするんだそうじゃないと本当のことは何もわからない新聞だってそうさ一つの新聞だけじゃ、mm-hmm. その記事を書いた記者の目線一つでしかものが見られない複数の新聞を読むことで初めて立体的かつ冷静に分析ができることもある It's like, a, like that website that you know that, that news website that sponsors a bunch of videos I watch where it's like look it aggregates all the,、uh, all the news sources and tells you like which、uh, Which political spectrum they're leaning towards, and it tells you like which,、uh, which you know, spectrum you tend to gravitate to, and like recommends you articles from the other side of the aisle so that way you can like get a more, if, if not well rounded, different perspectives on things. I got no care about Shinjitsu, me in it. Mmm, me in it. Maybe he found it amusing that a cheesy phrase like that had popped out of his mouth. For a while, he laughed, looking pleased. By that, he was simultaneously declaring that he had told everything that he knew, and that it was about time for me to leave. 
understand that. I got to my feet. Yeah, you'll get tired of it eventually. いまだに心の整理がつかない気持ち。真相はわかるかもしれない。わからないかもしれない。エヴァさんは犯人かもしれないし、犠牲者かもしれない。演者ちゃんが信じる真実が見つけられるのを祈ってるよ。Some Okunobi-san. It looks uh vaguely familiar to uh to another character I know, but I don't I don't think he is. Just the just the ponytail. Okunogi uh Tetsuro. A major player in the Ushirumiya group. After Ava's death and until Anjay succeeds the group, he and the other ministers are the ones that manage it. However, since Anjay has no desire to do so, the group is on the brink of internal discord, putting him in a difficult position as well. He was previously the president of a foodstuff distribution company, and had a very close relationship with Hideyoshi's company. Because of that long-lasting association, Eva particularly trusted him, and he was appointed to a significant post in the group. Hold on, wait. Does that say, like, Andre's side? Yeah, Andre's side. Okay. Itte, itte. これからどうするんだ。まあ、適当に。事件関係者やその道の専門家ってやつに何人かアポを入れてるので、そちらを当たるつもりです。Can go play moment. Company President Okunogi's secretary came in and handed him a memo over his shoulder. He read it and looked between it and my face. Uh oh. Probably. I mean, that's one good way to get back at him. I have the president of Aunt Eva. Who would ever go under the care of the Su uh, Sumadera family? They probably want, as Aunt Eva had so often threatened in the past, Cut off my arms and legs, throw me in a warehouse, and suck the Ushirumiya family's wealth dry. Okay. Under what legal pretense? Okay. Oh, I'm sure. せめて孫と言ってよ、あのババ。文脈から見るに君の意思を聞く気がないようだ。地下2階の駐車場に車が待たせてある。行きなさい。スマデラの家から引き渡せって言われてるんでしょ。え、そう、スリップアウトバックド
Okanogi again looked down at the world below and muttered, yeah, that'd be beyond me. Anja was no fool herself. She got off the elevator and stepped out onto the third floor. A taxi at the second level of the basement? That's so overly courteous that it feels wrong. It's probably better to decline that. But my enemies aren't fools either. They probably have control of not just the underground parking lot, but the first floor lobby as well. Going for the fire escape? This is such a massive building. Instead of getting anxious and escaping outside, maybe better to stay on the inside and wait it out? No, that's no good. If they gain control over the security room in a modern building like this, I'll have nowhere to run. This entire building is like a massive dead end. The third floor is the business floor. A girl like me clearly sticks out. Trying not to stand out any more than I had to, I walked at a quick pace, searching for an emergency staircase. One running down the outside of the building would be ideal. I found the door to the emergency staircase. After opening that heavy door, I found the outside stairs I was hoping to see. Once outside, I immediately encountered a man smoking a cigarette who looked like an employee skipping work. After glaring at me, he quickly crushed up his cigarette and went away. It looked like there's no one below. I'm going to escape, now's my only chance. Just as I thought that, with an incredible squealing of the tires, a black car slid directly below me and came to a sudden stop. I felt from the sound I I, ooh, I felt from the tire sounds that there were several more of them, and that this one had come here to block this path. Bam, bam. The car doors opened forcefully, three men in black suits jumped out, and they looked up at the emergency staircase. Ah, shoot. Our eyes met. The three of them began to clamor up the emergency staircase. They had already announced that they planned to be rough. This was pretty bad. Probably been ordered to bring me back by any means, with one of my arms yanked off if necessary, just as long as I'm still breathing. Clank, 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 clank. Their heavy, wild footsteps became a helix and began to rise from the lower floors, getting closer. In the entrance lobby of the building, a woman was walking forward at a leisurely pace, with seven black suited guards in tow. Seeing this ostentatious entrance, the security guards for the building ran up to them, asking if they had an appointment. <laughs> Got a little bit of a wart there. Sure, that sounded like like a character update sound, but I couldn't quite hear it over the dong 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 dong. Uh, Sumadera Kazumi, daughter of the declining noble family Sumadera, Ushurumiya Kirie's younger sister. She hates her sister Kirie so much that she loathes everything about her, so she also strongly hates Anje. Uh, she's the opposite of the freewheeling person Kirie was, and holds appearances in high regards, possessing a strong ambition for philanthropy. However, that is nothing more than a manifestation of her complex towards her sister, causing her to crave the limelight. There are several opposing factions in the Sumadera family, and they are constantly engaging a secret feud over who will control the vast wealth Anje holds. They sound like a lovely group of people. With his secretary behind him, Okanogi dashingly appeared from the elevator. Even though both of them wore bold smiles, they were caught in a tension reminiscent of the smell of gunpowder. ねえさんの可愛い、可愛い名誉。迎えに来たのよ、私は。後宮グループでは時間厳守がもっと嬉しいてな。時間を守れない人間は契約も守れないってのが先代会長のお言葉でして。ああ、デンギジスミスター、
逃がしたわね逃げられたと言ってもらいたいですな、yeah. これでも随分足止めはしてるんですよさすがに蹴取られましてねスマデラさんが時間通りに来てくれれば問題はなかったのですがこれだから地方人はルーズで困るんです、うん<laughs> Ima Nanto Kono Watakshini Nanto. Oh, you're from the boonies. Just look at you. You couldn't sense any of Kiri's sociability in the face of her younger sister Kazumi. Shuarner faced the arrogance of the ancient Sumadera family towards the ruined Ushermia family, as well as pride because she didn't want anyone to notice that her family was declining so much that they couldn't ignore the Ushermia family's wealth. Even at a glance, it was easy to understand why Anje hated everything about her aunt. Kazumi couldn't stand even a slight insult, and while she still smiled, her eyebrows twitched. At that time, one of the men in black suits behind Kazumi whispered to her. Renji sama wo hakken shimashita. Taiyou chu desu. Ara, mani yatte yokatta. Arigatou ne, okonomi. Youyaku yancha no mei o tsurete kaere sou da wa. Watakushi. あの子と一緒にゆっくりとお茶室で語らいたくてお道具まで準備して待ってたんだからうんトゥーズトゥーズ you say <laughs> clank 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 as the violence of the sound drew a helix it rushed up、uh, rushed up at me from below threatening to swallow me up of course even if I fight them I stand no chance of winning Even so, if I run into the building, I'll likely be jumped into a dead end of my own accord. The enemies will increase in number with time. If I can't do anything here, I won't have any more chances to escape. Then, three muscular black suits came to view below me. One, two, three. Three people. In other words, everyone who had gotten out of the car. If there had been just one of them, I might have been able to wait for the moment of arrival and drop kick them as hard as I could. Which might have worked out. But it really is impossible with three of them. Wait. Three, huh? Three. That might just be doable. I can do it. Gonna take a leap of faith onto the car? ゼロ一より十二、確保したか、応答されたし、どうした、応答しろ。な、なんてやつだ、きさ。Ouch. Look, see, I worked out, didn't it? It's just three. I've already experienced much higher places, after all. I knew I could jump down just three floors. It's a good thing that the car that came in was right beneath me. Even if it wasn't a Pleasant as a trampoline, it broke my fall. A little gently, a little roughly. <sighs> Having broken my fall, the roof of the car now had a massive dent around my body. I guess car roofs are more delicate than I thought. I don't think it's because of my weight. Now that they are pretty spongy. Apparently, the three men on the stairs hadn't anticipated me jumping down. Having realized they had been outwitted, they were hurriedly rushing back down. I have to run and escape while I have the chance. As I moved my body, the car roof made buckling and popping sounds. But I had been naive. There's no way they'd have all rushed up the stairs without leaving one person behind. There was one black suit left in the driver's seat of the car that had broken my fall. He stuck his head out the window. When he realized that the thing that had fallen on him was me, he jumped out. In a rush, I jumped off the roof, but his reaction was really fast. Either there was a massive reward for capturing me, or a harsh punishment for letting me get away. You got any mace on you? I was mercilessly held down against the asphalt. I was being crushed face down, covered and pressed down from above. It was a hold without a trace of elegance. But it really was logical and left me absolutely no room for resistance. I tried to push back with both hands, searching for a way to resist. 
but I was being pushed down solidly, and I couldn't even tear myself off the asphalt. Then, another car came, squealing its tires as it slid to a sudden stop. Guess it's all over. <laughs> the man that had been crushing me let out a sharp cry. He had yelped, uh, he had yelled close to my left ear, making it ring. What in the world? The black suit and I were unceremoniously unceremon rolled over. After being turned face up, the first thing I saw was an arm sticking uh, right out in front of my eyes. Oh, hey, poor folks. Amakusa grabbed my arm and easily pulled me up, spinning me around himself as the center of gravity. I thought that it was a little like a dance lasted only a few brief moments before he flung me through the open door into the driver's seat. Driver's seat? I climbed over the handbrake and slid into the passenger seat. I was, all right, I was about to say, you know how to drive? Pushing me through, Amakusa also got in and took up the driver's seat. Since we had suddenly taken off while I was still on all fours, I had to kick off and struggle around on the seat for a while, like a turtle flipped onto its back. Amakusa checked the rear view mirror for cars in pursuit, but flew into an artery of the big city without lowering his speed in the slightest. We sewed our way between cars one after another. It was like a chase scene in some action movie. Tossed about by his horrible driving, I had trouble getting myself reseated. Oh no, you're, you're gonna feel it tomorrow. It helps that you only weigh like 90 pounds, you know. You don't have enough time to pick up thermal blocks. Or, well, I guess people fall at the same rate. It's like the whole, you know, dropping a, a feather in a fucking basketball or whatever. Well, not not a feather, because, you know, that has more surface area and it would catch the wind and it falls fall slower. But y you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Science, things fall at the same rate, gravity pulls everything the same. <laughs> cool. He smacked the steering wheel, guffawing, 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 all right. An explanation for this flippantly spoken man? His name is Amakusa Ju uh, Juza, 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 okay. Ten and three is his last name, okay. Boop -a -boop -a -boop characters. Some some characters. Amakusa Juza, a former guard of Ava's, an extreme thrill seeker who accepts dangerous jobs for little pay. He had served as Anjay's bodyguard before, but after he broke Ava's strict order not to talk to Anjay countless times, Ava ultimately took a dislike to him and let him go. Anjay herself didn't find him all that bad because he was someone she could talk to. JSDF, Foreign Legion, private military companies. This man has traveled them all is skilled in uh, counter-sniping and escorting VIPs. And he, uh, oh god, his pants? Ugh! Oh god! I was gonna say, like, his, he's got an interesting, like, suit top, but it's not bad. But then I looked, he's wearing, like, double-layered pants? Gross! He was originally one of Aunt Ava's guards. If I remember correctly, she hated him for being too jokey and too chatty. He was especially young amongst the guards, but contrary to his outward of flippancy, he uh, had hopped from the first airborne of the JSDF to the French Foreign Legion, placing himself in overseas private military companies and high-class security companies one after another, making for a pretty incredible and unique career. But I heard that he ran off from both the JSDF and the French Foreign Legion, and that he'll be arrested if he enters France again. Both of these flippant episodes were very typical of him. Apparently, Guards had been sternly told not to chat with me unnecessarily, but I recall the didn't stop him coming to take a pass at me. Aunt Ava had particularly disliked that, and I believe she dismissed him right before she died. Ugh. Ugh. 
小小小社長に高級を提示されましたでまた出そうこんな男また立つのかしら来週までに帰りは脱走にはなりませんので話があったのは昨日ですお嬢が厄介な連中を呼び込むかもしれないと言われましてまさにその通りで申し訳ないわねお嬢と面識があってドタバタの経験も豊富ってことでご指名が来たんでしょうし、ね yeah, sure、お嬢のおかげでハッピーな休暇と小遣い稼ぎになりそうです You know, a person who deserts from two separate militaries. Impressive. Uh, yeah, considering you're a fugitive. Give <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Give and take, give and take. Yeah, I think she can foot any bill. So, Both need Kyuka no Encho or Demo Shinet to Narimasenze. But she, those them, Hano Hinokoto, and Shirabetai. Gonna take a field trip to the island? No, 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 Kenji. So, you know, Juni and mine, Hano Shima, the Nani, but that's not the day. Not to go to you, Shirabetai. So, you know, you must have a Shirabetai. You know, you must have to find a clue twelve years after, but. So, you know. Strange things have happened in cold cases. Oh,fun.そりゃお金や. <laughs> Yep, got blade. I mean, it's not that hard to get a stun gun, my guy. So, I got to. Zanen, you, Okonogi, Korega, and that no hinge that you got to the Yoroshi Kashira. Hey, she got a wave wrong at the door. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to thank you for the time. 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 I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. Yeah, isn't that the thing they fucking out in the boonies? Like, hey, uh, shouldn't... Don't, don't you want, like, uh, some... Oh, God, what is it? It's, like, Babazuke or something? I don't know. Is that Osaka? It might be Osaka. Fucking Kyoto people are weird. Uh, is it, it's under tips, yeah. Rimwa? Chazuke! Also, nine, yeah, yeah, Bubazuke in Kyoto, where Sumidara Kazumi is from, is green tea poured over rice with savory topping. You offer that to people to tell them, hey, it's time for you to get the fuck out. Like, leave, go. It, it, it's the it's a nice way of like, hey, this is this is the part where you you go now, so that way you don't have to be the person to be like, get the fuck out of my house. It's like, here here's your social cue. Leave. Uh, where Sumidera Kazumi is from, a green tea poured over rice with savory toppings. It said that in Kyoto. Offering a chazuke to a guest is often uh, uh, not meant sincerely, but is merely a way of indicating in a roundabout fashion that it is time for the guest to leave, and that the guest is expected to know when to refuse. Effectively, in this scene, Tetsudera brazenly steals a phrase from Kazumi's own cultural roots to tell her not to let the door hit her on the way out. <laughs> Ha 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 
You are just one charming lady, ain't you? Now back to Okonogi, she laughed a very... L she laughed at first lightly, but with an increasingly shrill and hateful tone, using that as a substitute for a sharp parting remark. At the exact moment she stopped laughing, the look on her face changed dramatically to that of a demon. A, a Hanya? But because her back was facing him, Okonogi never saw that expression. Okonogi watched her go, laughing coolly. His secretary whispered over his shoulder. なめられてたまるかってね。うん。しかし、あいつうまく立ち回ってくれたようだな。あとは演じちゃんの好きにさせるさ。頼むぜ、天草。かすみ様、逃走車両はレンタル。提示した免許証は偽装とのこと。Of so, now let's kick it up too much of a fuss. You know, you might get some unwanted attention. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, can't go walking back with your tail between your legs. Egg on your face. あんたらまとめてお抹茶を振る舞った方が良さそうね。地下のお茶室は狭いから順番待ちの行列になっちゃうかしら。Yeah, that that tea room doesn't sound very fun. 全力で捜索します。ああ、本当に可愛い子ね。姉さんに本当にそう。Ah, very spirited. Man, what is it with fucking rich people in these games with having like torture chambers underneath their houses? So I've never seen an indicator on a dashboard that was just a giant fucking car icon. What is that? Like, is is it like one giant check engine light? Hello? Also, you have like... No gas? Wait, no. The, the full gauge is... On the bottom and it moves up when it gets empty what i'm getting more confused as i look at this i'm gonna ignore i'm gonna ignore this dashboard those indicators are fucked. Yeah, he just made an even playing field you know ああ、だから3階でエレベーター降りたんですか。地下駐車場に車が待ってるなんて手際が妙に良すぎたから。奥野木さんに売られたかもしれないって思って。駐車場に待ち伏せがいたかどうかは今となっては証明不能だけどね
Prisoner Okanogi might have sold me out. No, because Paranoia told me that it was better to suppose that he sold me out, I assumed and decided that he did. Because I wasn't able to believe him, my truth, regardless of his truth, became he sold me out. I thought back to President Okanogi's words. Can you really call truth, truth, if it isn't absolute? Truth can change completely depending on whether you have love or not. In the end, perhaps this thing called truth doesn't exist. For each person who speaks of it, another truth is born from their interpretations. That's all there is to it. If I can't accept something that is indeterminate as truth, then where does the truth that I really want to find exist? And is that something that can even be seen with eyes? I might have a... I might be surprised to discover... I might be surprised to discover... Okay, yeah, I thought I read that wrong, but I didn't. That even if the truth is thrust in front of me, it may be something I cannot see. Yeah, there's a whole lot of action scenes going on here. あなたが分からなくなってしまった。何が真実って何人の数だけ真実がある。人の数だけ解釈がある。そしてそれは時間に not get into like a really small physics, please. What is it? Is it light that exhibits uh, characteristics of both a particle and a wave? Yeah, let's not talk about Schrodinger's cat, please. Schrodinger's。箱を開ければ真実はわかる。開ける前の議論なんて、気上の空論もいいところ。そうね。にもかかわらず、その空論を否定するには、箱を開ける必要がある。開けられない箱の中身についての、あらゆる想像は否定不能
あなたが彼女のゲーム版の外へ自在にできる駒だということ Since you're past the,、uh, the predetermined you know, part of the game, you're able to maybe peek behind some curtains that aren't even visible from you know, those two days' perspective. So, Beatrice, this is a game of the 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 game コマは未来に位置すれば位置するほど強い力を持つの言ったでしょ真実は観測されると姿を変える、mm-hmm. And you know they say hindsight's 2020 so uh get that perfect view on what was going on そういえばこんな話を聞いたことがあるわある日突然ケンタウルス座の構成が爆発してしまっても Yeah, it takes a while for the light to travel for you to even register that it happened. So, the light to travel for you to even register that it happened. So, the light to travel for you to even register that it happened. So, the light to travel for you to even register that it happened. So, the light to travel for you to even register that it happened. So, the light to travel for you to even register that it happened. So, the light to travel for you to even register that it happened. So, the light to travel for you to At the time we learned that the sun in Centaurus exploded, we Earth people will paint over our past four and a half years of history with a new truth. We will revise history with a new fact that it exploded four and a half years ago. However, for the four and a half year period until we learned that, despite the fact that it already died, the mistaken truth that the sun of Centaurus still exists will be able to exist as truth. The truth of the future wins over the truth of the past. So, you know, the most important thing is that the people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world are in the world. The people who are in the world are in the world. Like the people that go missing in national parks, and people are like, oh my god, the fucking Cannibal Hill people, and, and the Sasquatch s ate them, and the Park Service is hiding the truth. No. I don't, I don't think that's what it was. Even though it was clamored over as a murder plot at the time of the incident, in later years, strange occult theories which claimed that it had been the work of a witch ran rampant and began to paint over the truth of October 5th, 1986. The murder theory will probably be forgotten over time. And only the more bizarre, impressive witch theory will continue to remain a superstition and eventually paint over the murder theory entirely. So, the light of the sun is in the light of the sun. The light of the sun is in the light of the sun. The light of the sun is in the light of the sun. The light of the sun is in the light of the sun. The light of the sun is in the light of the sun. The one that was written by Maria, yeah? Episode one. 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 確かに観測されたら消えてしまう猫箱の中に縮こまってねだからメッセージボトルは悪質なのよ魔女は箱の外に出ようとした自らを観測させて魔女説以外の可能性を淘汰したつまり自らを否定できないように魔女説以外の全ての可能性を否定したということなんてことつまりベアトリーチェは悪魔の証明を成功法で成し遂げたのよ、うん、そしてそれは初めから魔女の計画に組み込まれていたメッセージボトルは1986年より未来に観測される情報ね、uh-huh. ベアトリーチェにもバトラにも観測できないエンジェベアトリーチェにしか観測できない、so、only you can disprove it. 本当はメッセージボトルのことなんて調べたくなかっただってそれを読むことは But what did we just talk about with, you know, looking at things with only one eye? 
、おこのぎさんに言われたわ。片方の目だけじゃ、物事を立体的に見られないって。魔女否定の視点と同時に、魔女皇帝の視点も必要ということ。それは正しい考え方。うん、視点の数は、分母に同じ。視点の数が1では、分子である謎は、わずかほども減らない。しかし、視点の数が増えれば増えるほど謎は割り算されていく分かってるわ事件の数年後近隣の島に流れ着いたメッセージボトルそれは神塚の手に渡ったアポイントは一応取ってあるの I was able to hear Aunt Ava's side from Okonogi-san Next would be the witch Why not? I'll listen to what Beatrice has to say. Read the letter! Oh boy, back to good old October 4th, 1986. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Uh, Red Truth, Blue Truth? We, we introducing a new truth? A, a different perspective truth? A truth from the future? Ooh, who knows? We'll have to find out next time in the next episode of Umineko, uh, where hopefully I won't be as ridiculously tired and uh, running on fumes, because my god, I am dying. So, with that, once again, like, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell. See you all next time for the next episode of Umineko. Catch you guys all there later. Bye. Mwah.